say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. the 
door that came my way and it took away my frown and all the things that had me bound and i was talking about all times that i was walking around in a daze but tonight i stand before you with nothing but praise oh lord oh we pray oh lord oh we pray Lord, we can't just stop our feet. We can't just stop our feet, Lord. We can't just lift our voice. We can't just lift our voices. We can't just lift our voice. We can't just lift our lord. We can't. Joy. I came to leave for joy, yeah. I came to leave for joy. I came to leave for joy, and I came to lift him up. I came to lift him up, and I came to lift him up. I came, oh Lord, oh. we pray. Everybody. 
Hallelujah. Come on, bless him, everybody. Adore him, honor him, for he is worthy. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord is worthy. Hallelujah to be praised. I wish everybody that had a challenging day would just give God praise. Everybody had a day that had some challenges. Hallelujah. But the Lord brought you through it. You ought to say thank you. You ought to bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And any day you get to start and finish is the day you ought to finish giving God praise. Hallelujah. I had a little bit of a challenging day today. And um, I had to make it to DMV before they closed because I had to do some paperwork there and I rushed in the DMV, got there in time and they were done, did everything that needed to be done and then she told me I needed $7 cash to finish this and I rarely carry any cash and so I'm patting my pockets trying to figure out where the cash is going to come from and this gentleman is right beside me in the next line. He said, Mr. He said, sir, do you need $7? I said, yes, I need $7. And he handed me $7. Come on, somebody. Now, that, don't, that may not seem like a big thing, but I couldn't have gotten my business straight without $7 in cash. But you know what? The one thing I have learned, and the Lord keeps telling me this over and over again, is that he makes a way. Hallelujah. Always makes a way. Hallelujah. You know, I got emotional. I think it was Monday. I was sitting at my computer after I finish morning prayer and that song says I'm standing here only because you made a way and and, and I'm not the, the, the weepy kind of guy but I was sitting there crying audibly Cherry thought something was wrong she said are you I said I'm okay I said but I'm standing here only because he made a way and when you've come through as many things as most of us have come through we know that we're here because God makes a way Oh, hallelujah. Anybody, anybody know him as a way maker? I know we don't hear that much in church anymore, but he's still a way maker. When doors are closed and situations are negative, God knows how to make a way. So give God praise, everybody. We're glad to be in the house of God tonight. And we're excited to have our brothers and sisters all the way from Dudley and Fayetteville, North Carolina. Let's thank God for abundant grace being with us tonight. Come on, let's thank God for abundant grace. We're moving back into more and more in-person activities. So every fourth Friday, we have an in-person Friday night worship. Most of the time we're online, but every fourth Friday we come back to the church, hallelujah, and we have an in-person service. So thank God for those of you that made it out today. Thank God for our guests that traveled to be with us this evening. And we're looking for God to bless us. We want to celebrate our speaker tonight in the person of Minister Chris Barrow. Come on, let's thank God for this man of God. Hallelujah, who I've known for many years, always been on fire, always been about the word and about, hallelujah, what he could do for the people of God. And I thank God I'm excited to hear him, so I'm going to get out of the way so we can hear what God has given him to share. I want to be a blessing tonight, and I know our tradition typically is that we bless the church and then we bless the speaker. Hallelujah. And I, I, I've dealt with that game for about 48 years, and that means sometimes you get the leftovers. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But this man has traveled to be with us. He worked and drove. So we're going to raise his offering first tonight. All right. Because I want us to be a blessing to him in a great way. So I want everybody to get a gift in your hand, everybody to do something special so that we can be a blessing to Minister Barrow, because I believe God has given him a word to share with us. And I don't want that word to get missed. Somebody grab a basket and bring it right down front. And we're going to get ready to receive the offering for the speaker, and we're going to bless him first in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then if you've got some leftovers, you can bless the church, all right? Praise the Lord. We okay, so you can bless the church. But tonight we want to give the first fruit to the man of God. Hallelujah. You know, Elijah told the widow woman, make me a cake first. She was hungry, and she wanted to eat, and she needed to eat, and he asked her, um, to bring him some water and she went to go get some water and as she was walking he yelled behind her oh and bring me a little cake first and she told him she said you know all I've got is this little meal in my hand I'm gathering sticks to dress it and make it and we're going to eat it and die and she said thus saith the Lord for as long as this famine lasts 
hallelujah, the meal in the barrel is not going to disappear, and the oil in the cruise is not going anywhere, but bring me that cake first. Oh, see, 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 y'all ain't read the Bible. Come on, somebody. I'm not trying to jack you tonight, but I'm going to tell you something, that you want to put your money in blessed hands. Come on, somebody. You want to put your money in blessed hands hands because if the hands you put your money in are blessed guess what you're going to be blessed so those who are watching tonight people are already starting to give online so those who are watching tonight you can share if you would i'm going to put it on the screen in just a second so if you want to be a blessing who are watching remotely you can do that and god's going to bless you for doing that in the name of jesus christ and we're all going to be blessed in the lord there are a number of ways to give you can certainly give a cash gift you can write a check to refuge temple or write it to the speaker tonight so we can make sure that he gets everything that's coming in this offering. And then if you're using the card machine, use it in the back, bring the slip up so we'll make sure he gets the money. If you're online, just simply go to refugetemplenc.com and give your money there, all right, on the donate page. If you have the Givelify app, you can share via Givelify. Just type in Refuge Temple Burlington and you can give your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign, capital O-N-E, capital R-E-F-U-G-E. -E. One refuge, one word, and you can make your gift there and share. And everything in this offering is going to bless the speaker tonight. Let's stand, everybody, with our gifts, our glad hearts, our grateful hearts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you for another day. You have brought us, you've kept us, you've provided, you've made ways for us, and we thank you, God, for always making a way. We stand to bless your servant. We want you, O oh God, to enrich our hands that we might be a blessing to him to encourage his heart in the work that you've assigned him to do. I pray, God, that you would anoint every giver that's in person and online to give and support that we might be a blessing to your servant. Bless the offering now. Bless the gift and the giver. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody shout hallelujah. You can just come, come while I'm talking and bring your gift. Hallelujah. the word now we don't want to delay it any further and we're so honored to have this man of God I've known him probably going back at least 20 years by now at least 20 years by now um, servant of the Lord preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ lover of people but especially young people praise the Lord has yielded himself to serve and to minister um, I get a chance to watch Abundant Grace, and once again, thank God for Pastor and Lady Powell. We appreciate them and the work that they're doing in Dudley. Let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for them. And they're doing an outstanding job there. The church is growing. I watched the Youth Day, I believe, a couple of weeks ago, and I saw that, that platform filled with young people singing unto the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a good thing. Come on, somebody. When kids can do all of this negative stuff, 
part of my hard day was dealing with a negative child, doing some negative stuff that shouldn't happen in school and hallelujah. But when you are raising children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, somebody has to take time with them. Even if you're no longer, quote unquote, the young people, the young people still need guidance. Come on, somebody. Young people still need leadership. Young people still need somebody that will take time with them. And, and, and I see in the spirit of revival that's beginning with the young people. Come on, somebody. That's what I see. Lord is doing the same thing here. We had a powerful service on the other su- on Sunday, and the Lord blessed us. Just a wonderful, wonderful work of God moving in our midst. So I'm excited about what God is doing. So without any further ado, can we stand on our feet and give God praise for the Lord's servant, Minister Chris Barlow? Come on, let's thank God for him. everybody. Hey Amen. I'm going to grab this podium. I want to get real close to you guys. Is that all right? Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. I wanted to use my hand, so I asked Elder Taylor if, if uh, there was a headset. So, Keep the mic because I know we're recording. I want the people to hear that's uh, online, but I do want to get up close and personal. Is that all right? Amen. the mic. We thank and praise the Lord that he has been keeping you. He has been blessing you. We honor him and we glorify him. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah. We honor you for who you are. You are God and beside you there is no other. None can do the things you do for the Bible declares that God of the nations are but idols. Hallelujah. They have eyes, but they can't see. Ears, and they can't hear. Mouths, but they can't speak. But your word reminds us that your eyes are upon the righteous, and your ears are open unto their cry. We thank you, O God, Lord Jesus, for having a hand that is mighty to save. Thank you for being a God that cares, a God that's concerned about his creation. We thank you for keeping us throughout the course of this day for making a way for us. That's the only reason why we are here is because you've made a way for us. We ask you now, Lord, to come by and see about us in this place. Do what you do best, Father God. Minister to the hearts and to the need of thy people. Meet every need, dry every teary eye, and give us strength and grace that we may be the witnesses you have called us to be. We thank you, O oh God, and we praise you. We honor you because you are good. We praise you because you are God. Bless us now and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. 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 I'm just going to ask you to uh, turn with me to the book of the Acts, chapter 3. And we'll read the first eight verses. Again, that's Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. I thank God for my pastor, my first lady being here. Amen. Sister Jessica, she's here. Little Cam is here. Thank God for AGC. Thank God for my wife, my beautiful children who have come out with me to support my nephew who is with me back there on the drums. 
think he was on the joint. So he, he must have stepped out. But thank God for everybody that's here. Somebody give God praise for you. Amen. I'm here. I'm here. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked in alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. In the few moments that I have, I just want to minister from the topic, no more missed opportunities. No more missed opportunities. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you for thy word. The last four years have been, uh, one author had declared, the best of times and the worst of times. Amen. It's been a time of highs and lows. While there are several factors that contribute to the highs and lows we've experienced over the last four years, there is a commonality that we all share. Amen. And that commonality is COVID. COVID came through and wrecked shop. It came through and wrecked lives. It wrecked homes. It wrecked churches. It really turned people's lives up side down. Amen. Last I checked, about four million people, four million people met their demise as a result of COVID. And just as many jobs were lost, hearts have been broken, etc. As horrifying as the pandemic was, it taught me a few lessons. The first thing it taught me was that a crisis will reveal your true character. Crises reveal your true self. It reveals how sure you are of God's word and where you stand as it relates to the constitution of your faith. And this leads me to believe that many of us throughout that time, amen, the COVID pandemic revealed to us that many of us were connected to the church, but our connection to God was questionable. <laughs> It showed us that, amen, we were connected to doing the church thing, amen, we were connected to showing up, we were connected to singing, and we were connected to waving our hands saying, go ahead, preacher, but as soon as we had to close the churches down, <laughs> people felt like they were going to lose their mind, oh, what am I going to do, I can't go to church, and, and, and don't get me wrong, saints, I'm I'm a firm believer in God's word. I know that Hebrews 10 and 25 tells us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. But you should have enough power and connection to God that if you prayed in your house, God shows up. <laughs> I wish I had a witness in the house. You should be so connected to God that if you fall down on your knees and you seek him in your living room, God will show up and turn that living room up side down amen you should be so connected to him that wherever you may find yourself you can call upon him and God responds hmm. sadly four years later many of us are still strongly connected to the church but when it comes to our connection with God amen not trying to hurt nobody just trying to help somebody <laughs> The second thing it taught me, this pandemic, is that ministry opportunities are all around us. There are opportunities to minister all around us. 
You don't have to wait until a Friday night or fourth Friday night. You don't have to wait for a second Sunday youth service. You don't have to wait until it's your turn on the rotation preachers and singers for you to do something to minister to somebody else. Why? Because opportunities are all around us to minister and to help somebody in this Christian walk. How many of you know that you had several opportunities just getting to church to be a witness and a minister to somebody? Because the ministry starts in the home. It's sad when the, the, the husband and wife are fussing with each other. They're flying, trying to get to her church, honking the horn at people along the way, and then got the nerve to stand in church and say, praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> You had an opportunity God was showing you even in the midst of a difficult day with all the news that I received about the things going on in my children's school, about the news I received about my aunt called the, and their being in hospice and the doctor saying just call the family in. Those were opportunities just for me on this day to be a witness in spite of what we had to take place right here, right now. Mine boggled down with so much, but I had to tell the Lord I have to be an example and take advantage of this opportunity to be a witness first to my wife then to my children that regardless of what comes or what goes I have to take this opportunity to be a light for the world somebody give God praise but opportunities are all around us you might not feed a multitude with two fish and five barley loaves but you certainly can buy a loaf of bread, some PB and a J, and a jug of milk and feed a family. When was the last time you maximized an opportunity that you know God laid on your heart? You think you crossed paths with people just for the sake of crossing paths with them? You think that you see people in the particular uh, predicaments they find themselves in just because? Those are opportunities that God has afforded us so that we could be a witness to somebody. Just maximize your opportunity. Third lesson the pandemic taught me, that people really need help. People really need a message of hope. And guess who's the one that's going to give them the help they need? <laughs> guess who's going to deliver the message of hope that they so desire and long for? We are. You can't wait for your pastor, amen, to, to call a prayer line. You can't wait for the choir to sing a song. You've been put in that situation so that you, 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 and you could meet the need of that individual. People are out here hurting. They didn't ask for that. But guess what? Because God has allowed you to cross their path, now it's your opportunity to be a blessing to them and meet whatever need that they may have. Fourth lesson, and I promise you we're moving. The pandemic taught me how frail we are. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. It doesn't matter how much people love you, how much you love people. Doesn't matter if you are the lead praise and worship singer. Doesn't matter if you are the associate superintendent of the third Episcopal church on the block. When it's your time, it's your time. And that hits home for all of us. Because if I were to take a survey right now, I'm sure that every last one of us in here can name at least one person that was impacted to the point of impacted by COVID to the point where they lost their life. No matter how much we loved them, no matter how anointed and great they were, when it was their time, it was their time. And this brings to thought a Kobe Bryant quote, quote who so happened to pass away in 2020. It's been four years now. He says, the greatest mistake we make in life is thinking we have time. Man. Thinking we have time. Time for what? Time to call that person that we said we were going to call two weeks ago. Time to visit the loved one that we said we'd see last Christmas and now three Christmases done passed. Watch this. Time to forgive that person that hurt you several years ago or even yesterday. Time to make right what you've done wrong towards somebody else. You don't know when your ticket is going to be punched and God is going to call your name. 
and the, 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 the negative thing about thinking that you have time is that you begin to become conceited thinking, oh, I can do this at a later time. There's an arrogance that comes with procrastination because you begin to think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. You think, oh, I have time. Oh, I'll do this later. Oh, I'll put this off into a different day. But you have no idea if you're going to live long enough to see that day. That's why the scripture says to do it now, to agree with your adversary once you cross paths with them. You need to make it right, right then and there, because you have no idea when your name will be called. We're frail creatures. That's why it behooves us to be about our father's business. James says, but you don't know what will happen tomorrow. For life is but a vapor. I need everybody to breathe in. Now exhale. That's a vapor. That's your life. Statistically, we breathe 960 breaths an hour. 23,040 breaths a day, 8,409,600 breaths a year. I got a question for you. What are you doing with your breath? <laughs> what are you doing with your... <sighs> are you complaining? Are you making excuses? Or are you executing? Or are you being about your father's business or are you just sitting around procrastinating and saying, hey, I'll do it a different day? Your life is but a vapor. Now, the flip side of that is as soon as 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 fast as that was to breathe in and breathe out, that could all that could be the last breath the Lord allows you to take. So once again, we don't know when our time is going to come. This takes me to the text. This takes me to the text. Man, I wish I could use my hands a little more, but it's all right. Y'all all right out there? The Bible tells us in the first verse that Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Now, that's critical to grasp because the ninth hour means it was 3 p.m. Jews prayed consistently three times a day, right? If you need to prove that's why Daniel prayed, it didn't matter when he knew the decree was signed uh, by the king, he still opened his window toward Jerusalem and prayed three times a day, right? They, 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 they've become conditioned with prayer, right? Prayer should be a lifestyle for the saint, not an occasional practice. Man, prayer should be our lifestyle. Not an occasional practice. This should be something that we do regularly, multiple times a day. Not just when there's a need, not just when we're sick, not just when we need God to show up and show out. When was the last time you just took time to pray to thank God for the goodness, he, uh, for the good things and for his goodness that he's shown towards you? So prayer was a lifestyle for Peter and John. And the saints should be the same way. We should be conditioned in prayer. Conditioned means we become consistent with that lifestyle, with that habit. The beautiful thing about becoming conditioned and being consistent with something is that consistency creates an atmosphere for change. <laughs> if you want things to change in your home, I dare you to start praying. <laughs> Not just once, not, I dare you to be, create a habit, a routine of meeting God at the same time every day and saying, God, it's just me and you. You should get to the point where if you don't pray, you feel like something's missing, something's wrong. Like you done left the house and you're missing a, a vital piece of garment or something. But you should get to the place where you're praying consistently. You want your children to get in line? Start praying with them consistently. You need things to change on the job? Start praying consistently. You need things to change in your life? Start Start praying consistently because it creates an atmosphere for God to move. Many of us don't know what to do because we aren't in tune with God. That's the beautiful thing about prayer. It opens up the airway between you and God, not just for you to speak to him, but for him to speak to you. When was the last time you heard his voice? 
many of us miss opportunities to minister because we can't hear from God because we haven't taken time out to I heard somebody say pray hmm. the second verse tells us that as they're going into the temple there's a certain man who was lame from his mother's womb excuse me who was carried uh, whom they carried and they laid daily at the gate this was something that the, the, he was lame, excuse me, from his mother's womb. He had been going through this all his life. The point I'm trying to get is that people have been going through things for a long time. Nobody wakes up and says, you know what? I'm going to contract a deadly disease today. Nobody wakes up and says, you know what? I'm a prostitute the rest of my life to make ends meet. Nobody wakes up and say, you know what, I'm going to get strung out on drugs just because I think it's a cool thing to do. People who find themselves in that situation, something has happened and they've been in that situation for a long time. And they need somebody who's connected to God, who will hear from God, who can do something about their situation. But if we aren't connected because we aren't communicating, we'll be just like those who've passed by this man instead of doing something to miraculously change his life oh, we get excited when it comes to the prayer line in church oh and I'm not I'm not making light of it I love to see the spirit of God move heal save and deliver in the church house but he can do the same thing at your house he can do the same thing while you walking through Walmart ha, teba, hallelujah when was the last time you walked in that authority at Walmart while you were trying to get your grocery list together? And you just walked past somebody and said, brother, I'm, can I pray with you? And change that brother's life, that sister's life. But he had been going through this for a long time. As I said, people are out there hurting. What are we doing to bring change to their life? Or have we just become so comfortable with coming to church? Man. As you continue to read, I, I love the fact that, amen, verses 4, 5, 6, putting these together. Peter says, look on us. He fastens his eyes upon this man. And he says, look on us. He's speaking with boldness and with confidence. He says, silver and gold have I none. I don't have any money. I know that's what you're looking for. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, do what? Rise up and walk. Now think, this man is lame. But because Peter and John were bold, they reached out. Man, get up. <laughs> what are you talking about, preacher? You need to respond like you know God is going to answer. You can't be walking around here timid, thinking God is going to move. You're like, can I pray for you? Oh, bless the Man, you better say, come on, the Lord has got something great for you. It takes me back years ago when I was in the school system. I spent about four or five years working at the alternative school. And I knew that this particular boy had a demon in him. I just knew how he was just growling and cussing and foaming at the mouth. So we have these... Uh, pods if you will where we take them when they're going crazy we take them to the pod so they can't harm themselves and he was in there oh cussing me out he was just going at it foaming at the mouth I'm thinking man this is a demon in that boy so I walk up to him oh, in the name of Jesus and he kind of oh, but he kept going at it he kept going at it then something rose up in me the shame and the, and, the, and the embarrassment and the timidness left and I reached my hand out and laid it on him I said in the name of Jesus close your mouth and he was foaming still, but he couldn't open his mouth to say anything. And someone says, oh, well, he got quiet. I said he had no choice. Whenever you're operating in the spirit, you're listening to the voice of God, you have to respond like you know God is going to answer. You have to. That You can't sit around and just pity pat this thing and expect God to move. You have to know who you're connected to, who you've been praying to, so when it comes time to act, you know God is going to do something. Yeah. 
So he reaches out because he knew the man was going to get up. He lifted him up because he knew the man was going to walk. Because he was responding to the situation because he knew God was going to answer him. The beautiful thing about this, even more beautiful than the lame man leaping and rejoicing and walking, is verse 10. Well, I would say 9 and 10. And all the people, all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew who all the people knew. That it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they, who's they? All the people were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Witnessing to one is like witnessing to all. Man. Doing something miraculous for one is doing something miraculous for all. Because in the midst of me doing something for you miraculously through the power of God, all the people here will witness it and they see the power of God. So it, number one, gives them faith in the one I serve. Number two, it gives them a testimony about the one I serve. Number three, they'll go out and share that with other people. Why are you not walking in your power? You want the church to be filled? Go out and operate in your gift. Don't just wait for Sunday morning. Oh, I got to go out. It's time to pray, preach, sing, dance, shout. When you get up tomorrow, what's tomorrow? Saturday, when you get up and go on your morning jog, for those who go jog in the morning, stop and lay hands on somebody. When you go to the grocery store, pray with somebody. When you at that mechanic shop getting that car worked on, minister to somebody and lift them up. Could you imagine how full the churches would be if we operated in the power and the authority God gave us you know why Jesus was so popular because of the miracles he wrought people were amazed oh man I, he healed me I gotta follow him you ain't gotta well I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna say nothing negative give people Jesus you don't have to pimp anybody out just give them Jesus. But in order for you to give them Jesus, you got to be connected to him. You've got to communicate with him. So when it's time for you to react, God will respond in the midst of the situation. Let's give God a hand praise. Come on, let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God. We pray if we said or done anything that thou did not commission us to say. Forgive us, cover us in thy blood, and give us the opportunity to make right that which we have said wrong. We thank you for the pastor here, the first lady here. We thank you for all those, Father God, who thought it not robbery to take time out to assemble themselves here on this Friday night. We pray your favor upon them. Help us, Father God, for look for extraordinary opportunities and everyday occurrences, Lord Jesus, that we may be a light, a witness, a help to someone each and every day of our life, Father God. We thank you. We praise you for your word producing good fruit in us that is evident to those who we interact with on a daily basis. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. We turn it back into the hands of Bishop Davis. Perfect segue to a moment of prayer. Nothing in my life has worked as well as prayer. And I've tried a lot of things to unravel situations, to make things better, to um, in conflict, to um, grow the church, to do things, but nothing has worked better for me than prayer. And if you have a need or a situation tonight, I don't want us to miss this opportunity, and that's the opportunity to pray, all right, the opportunity to talk to God. So if you can and will, take the hand of somebody right beside you. The scripture says, 
if we agree as touching anything. And, and that's why, you know, I, I went to run revival sometime and somewhere and the person said, well, you know what Bishop Davis going to do? He's going to make us hold hands. All right. Because that's what I do, because there's a power in agreement. Come on, somebody. And if you can step beyond whatever you're going through and just take the hand of somebody, it says, I'm in agreement with you. I'm trusting God for you. I'm believing God to help you. And, 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 and I'm not just here to pray for me, but I'm here to pray for you. And so I want everybody for the next few moments, I'm not going to keep you long, but I just want us to pray because somebody in here has a problem, somebody has a condition, somebody has a situation, somebody has something going on in their lives, and we don't want you to walk away from the service, hallelujah, and not have prayer for your situation. This is the most, oh God, the message was wonderful, it was great, but this is the most important part of the service because we put into practice what we have heard. The preacher, hallelujah, talked about miracles, and I still believe in miracles. The preacher talked about faith. The preacher talked about the frailty of humanity, but what strengthens all of us is the power of prayer. So everybody join me right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I love you. I adore you. I worship you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, and your grace. I thank you God for this word. You sent this brother here, oh God, to tell us not to miss an opportunity. And Lord, right now we're standing in the middle of an opportunity. Somebody that you want to bless, somebody that you want to save, somebody that you want to deliver, somebody that you want to strengthen and edify. God, we don't want to miss this moment because you've come here tonight to bless somebody, to strengthen somebody, to edify somebody to break the yoke of the enemy somebody's battling depression somebody's battling fear somebody's battling anxiety sleepless nights but God we believe you right now that at this moment oh God we're at change Lord at this moment we're at the transition at this moment we're at the move of God that is going to disrupt the plan of the enemy God I thank you right now that you hear the cries of your sons. You hear the cries of your daughters. You hear the cries of your children. And you've come tonight to bless. I pray a blessing upon everybody standing in this house right now. Whatever the need is, you're providing right now. Whatever the cause is, you're making a way right now. Whatever the situation is, you're working it out right now. I pray for salvation. I pray for deliverance. I pray for the breaking of every chain. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let no one leave this house the way they came. But God, minister to their needs. Minister to their situation. I pray for the saving of our families. I pray, my God, for the saving of our children and our grandchildren. I pray right now for deliverance from marriages and homes. I pray right now for strength, oh God, to everybody that stands in need now. Now. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, God, because you hear our cry. I thank you, God, because you respond to our needs. And Lord, I love you now. So God, bless every heart and mind. Oh God, I praise you. Oh God, because I feel change in the atmosphere. I bless you because I feel transformation in the atmosphere. I honor you, God, because I feel you working things out for somebody. Do it tonight, Lord strengthen tonight God and Lord will give your name the glory the honor and the praise now can I get everybody to offer God the best praise you can give him right now clap your hands open your mouth wave your hands bless the Lord because your praise says God I believe you your praise says God I trust you your praise says oh God your praise God that you will deliver and I love you now and I praise you Jesus oh come on give God another praise everybody before you take that seat come on come on come on this might be the praise 
faith that turns it for you. This might be the praise that shifts for you. This might be the praise. That's why we pray without ceasing. Because we never know what prayer is going to be the prayer that destroys the yoke of the enemy. in the spirit. Let me tell you what I see in the spirit. And this is why the preacher said this about consistency. You've got a yoke that needs to be broken. And you never, I don't know of anybody when we were kids we would put weights on planks and boards to see how much weight it would take to crack the board. Come on somebody. And we'd add this and we'd add that and we'd add the other trying to crack whatever that was. Well, your prayer, oh God, is putting pressure on your yoke. I hear the Holy Ghost. Your prayer is putting pressure on the yoke. And you never know when that last prayer, Hashitama, is going to be the one that cracks. You never know. That's why you don't stop praying. I don't care how useless you think it is, how hopeless you think it is. That last prayer is going to be the one that breaks and destroys that yoke. You prayed for Johnny over and over again and Johnny kept getting worse but you're going to pray tonight for Johnny and that yoke that's why you don't stop praying for people and you don't stop praying over situations the devil is the only oh God I hear Holy Ghost the devil's the only one that wants you to stop praying. No other person in the universe wants you to stop praying. Hallelujah. And when we understand the power of prayer, you know, the, the early apostolic church was powerful because Jesus didn't inject, I'm sure they sang, but he didn't inject a lot of singing in his disciples. I'm sure they gathered and they ate and they fellowshiped, but he didn't inject a lot of just fellowship. They did that. But the one thing that you hear from Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that's revealed in Acts is prayer. Oh, God. That's why the enemy would rather you do anything else. You can have an all night sing along and gather around the organ, organ and sing all night, and I'm not going to say you're not going to have a good time. But if you really want to see deliverance break out, call it all night prayer. Woo, God, call it all night prayer. We don't do that much anymore. I remember praying until the sun would rise. Come on, somebody. Everybody walk out and get a biscuit on the way out the door and go to the house and go to sleep because they've been in prayer all night long. And God is, I don't know, I'm really afraid because I don't know what it's going to take for the church to go in prayer. Pandemic, war in Russia, war in Israel, war in Jordan, almost war in Taiwan. We've got a, we've got a society that is just crazy right now. When, when somebody who's on trial in five different states is two steps from being president, and y'all ain't praying. Yeah, and, and I, I'm not here to get in your politics. I don't care how you vote. But think about how twisted society has become. You know, I remember Nixon. They got so tired of him. The Republicans walked up the street and said, it's time for you to go. But we have a society that is so warped in their thinking that it doesn't matter how you package it. They just keep doing what they're doing. You need to pray. You need to pray. And when we look at the state, even of the church, you know, and whether your pastor is a celebrity pastor and they're trying to hook him up for negative stuff, don't mean you shouldn't pray for your pastor. Doesn't mean the pastor's not under attack. Doesn't mean the pastor's not being challenged every day with discouragement. And most preachers die for lack of encouragement. Lack of encouragement, just somebody to pray for them. And, and don't say it 
just because it's an expression. But if you're really praying for your pastor, every now and again, go and tell him, I'm praying for you. Doesn't mean he's in disaster. Doesn't mean he's in sin. Doesn't mean he's in trouble. But it matters that you pray for people. And it matters that we tell people that we're praying for them. Thank God for the word tonight. Come on, let's thank God for the word. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Burroughs, for bringing such a wonderful message tonight. God bless you and God bless your family. Let's thank God again for abundant grace being with us tonight. God bless you. I want to thank God for Elder Taylor, who is our Friday night worship leader. Come on, let's thank God for him. And this thing about consistency is a part of it because for as long as he's been a part of this church, he's been engaged in the Friday night prayer and the Friday night worship. And even when we had to leave the building, we found a way to keep it going on, hallelujah, on social media. And now we're in between the two worlds, hallelujah. But we had about 40 people, hallelujah, in cyberspace with us tonight in worship. Give God praise, everybody, hallelujah. So the word is going out here and beyond, and we thank God for that. Thank you for being with us tonight. I want to call on my two special friends that are here, Lady Jackie Powell, and I thank God for her. She's a wonderful woman of God, and I appreciate her. And if she don't do nothing but say praise the Lord, she got to say something before she go all the way back to Dudley tonight because she is a woman of God, and I thank God for her. And after she's come, my precious friend and brother, and he is, Elder Powell is my friend, all right? I came close to fighting somebody in July, all right, because I was upset about Elder Powell. Hallelujah. I, oh, God. I, we, I ain't, we ain't even going back there. I'm having negative flashbacks. I had to go and find my stuff and say, you know what? I'm coming to see you. Hallelujah. Because when people are your friend, they're just not your friends when things are going well. They're your friends when there's adversity. And he is my friend. He has been my friend for longer than I can remember. I think before my, my at least before Geneva was born. Geneva's 27, so at least 27 years or more, he has been my friend, and I thank God for him, the ministry that God is doing through him and through Lady Powell down in Dudley. Thank God for them. So Lady Powell, come and say praise the Lord to us. Pastor Powell, come and say praise the Lord to us, and give us the benediction, all right? We'll be ready to go. When you get through talking, we'll be ready to go. Give God praise again. We've had a wonderful service tonight, and we thank God for all of you in Jesus' name. Yes. Okay. There is food. There is food, all right? There is food. Hallelujah. Waiting for you in the lobby. Please pick up everything that's there, all right? Lady Davis, you trying to tell me something? Okay. All right. Come on. We'll let her wait. Praise the Lord. I give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as first in my life. We thank God for safe travelings here. We thank God for the service. Um, we thank God for our, our Elder um, Barrel bringing forth the word. We just thank God for the message of no more op missed opportunities. Thank God for how he did open up the word and t tell us that we should be ready, willing and ready to take advantage of, any, of the opportunity to witness to, to whatever it is that we can do for the Lord. I just thank God for the power of prayer. Just thank God for everything that he has done for us. Thank God again for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. Would not have missed the opportunity for nothing. We ask that you continue to pray for us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Giving honor to God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Bishop Reginald Davis. God bless you, Bishop. We're so glad to see you as well. And thank God for your friendship and your connection with Abundant Grace Church. To Lady Powell, to Lady Davis. Amen. Let's give God praise. Forgive me. Amen. Lady Davis, and to all of the saints of the living God, certainly to the word of the Lord that has been spoken in our hearts tonight. No more missed opportunities. And thank God for that phrase. Amen. Because there's so many chances that we have that God has given us while we're on the earth that we can be a blessing to somebody. And the beauty of that story is they went to church with two people, but they end up going in church with three. All you got to do is open your mouth. Amen. And somebody can receive the word of the Lord. Well, I praise God for being here. Certainly thank God I would talk a little longer, but I've got two hours of travel. So Bishop, you told me to do the benediction. We're going to do the benediction. God bless you. May rest on your feet. In the name of the Lord. Certainly glad for my daughter, Jessica, uh, and my grandson being with us as well, uh, all the way from the big city of Charleston. 
uh, South Carolina. Uh, let us lift our hearts unto the Lord with his bowed heart surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. These blessings we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Until we meet again, grace be unto you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you.